Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up, YouTubers? Um, as I said, you know, I'm still contemplating on keeping or getting rid of my channel, but I mean, it's not like it was a, a fraud or something. Anybody out there, whether you like me or, or don't know me or whatever, everybody knows that I, I'm a man of my word. And, you know, my plan really was to actually, I mean, I was really thinking about uh, getting rid of the channel, but it wasn't even as much as um, the fact that I decided, you know, thanks to Lou and some other people talked me into it, which I do appreciate having good people and even good uh, viewers who actually said, no, nah, I don't go, Mike. And even though a lot of people do not, uh, I don't have a lot of views or a lot of um, people, you know, thumbs ups or comments or um, subs, it's still good to know that a lot of people do watch my channel. Uh, one of the main things that really had me thinking twice yesterday, I met... Um, you know, I'm nostalgic. Anybody knows his channel. Uh, he does like a lot of, uh, you know, he does a lot of videos, um, especially normally um, going to the Columbus flea market on uh, more or less Thursdays and I guess Sundays as well uh, with his wife. You know, they're both real sweet, real cool. Um, I don't know if he mentioned what state he's from, but if he did, it didn't. I'm not going to mention it, but he does go to the Columbus uh, market um, all the time. I went there in the wintertime. Uh, and I actually, it was, it was different. I wound up spending more than I made because, you know, the Amish people, food there is delicious, expensive, but worth every penny of it. Like, you were spending money, and, well, and once you take a bite of something, you won't really regret what you spent. Uh, and it's a great experience going there, too, as far as, I mean, it's, I, I, I personally like it better than go there to buy than sell. Because um, people there are very, very thrifty. Unless you have real high-end stuff, and if you do, people will buy. You know, I do have to say that. Um, so, you know, he's a, you know, he's something I've been watching for a while. Real cool guy, man. You know, the minute I watched his first video, I just liked him. And you know, we met yesterday. You know, we, uh, you know, we were talking for a little bit. Um, he gave me his card and stuff like that. So, we'll definitely be convert, um, conversing um, soon. And of course. You know, I was actually talking to a couple of famous people about it. And it was like, dude, just continue doing what you do. And a lot of people actually watch my videos. I get a lot of people saying, dude, you the guy from eBay, right? Um, and I had three people today actually say Mike Son, 007, what happened to your channel? And I was like, are you serious? And they said, yo, a lot of people want to know what happened to your channel. And they said, you don't do YouTube anymore. I said, yeah, I do, but it's under another name. And it's like, another name? And I was like, yeah, East New York's Finest. And they said, for how long? And I'm like, two years. They're like, what? Everybody thought, you, a lot of people thought you died, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to sit here and say maybe they're all telling the truth, maybe they're all fibbing, I don't know. But um, there's a lot of things that I put in play, and I, I've decided, and I was, I was, you know, basically talking um, to a lot of, to certain people that, you know, I value their opinions, not only just people on the show and all you views out there, but, you know, a lot of people was like, yo, you shouldn't, ah, 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 so I decided, I'm still in the thought process of it uh i didn't do a lot of video today i was at the sideshow booth but you know i was getting kind of like looks <laughs> so <laughs> you know I, I know some people did look at me like they knew exactly who i was from the gate um i mean nobody said nothing but you know i i guess i felt more i don't know who gives a shit but they had a lot of nice shit. I think I did uh, show some video. I think I did do a video of it. Uh, but I think the idio, um, the idio. I think the video ended. Uh, I think it cut itself off because my, my computer, my computer, oh my God, what's wrong with me? My phone, um, I guess it went into safe mode because of the battery. Um, and I'm still trying to work that damn $1,700 camera I have. Um, it's not $1,700 now, but back then it was. Um, and I had it for like over a year and I haven't been using it. And now with the 4K out, my camera's probably like nothing compared to that shit, but I don't give a shit. It's still a lot better than my iPhone. Um, so yesterday, I wanted to meet, I wanted to go and deal with the Mark Hamill thing, because uh, JDF did leave a little earlier than I anticipated. And he took care of everybody in line, every, to the last person. And, uh... It was actually really, really cool. And by the time me and Isaiah got downstairs, um, they were already done for Mark Hamill. So I said, all right, it's got to be tomorrow. And it's funny because yesterday was, re yo, yesterday, yo, for Thursday, yesterday was like a fucking Saturday, bro. Today was like, 
on Wednesday or Thursday. It was you would have never. I mean, you know, there were some high peaks. I would say somewhere between noon, somewhere around twelve, twelve thirty ish to like one thirty two o'clock. It was. It's, it still wasn't no way like yesterday. I'm pretty sure tomorrow's gonna be sick, but um, it, it was it was up there, man. Uh, I mean, it wasn't that bad today. And for Friday, you would have never thought it was. You would have thought yesterday was today, and today was yesterday. That's how crazy it was yesterday. And um, I, I don't understand it. That was just weird. But anyway, I was like, you know what? Uh, I was talking to Ron uh, English uh, for a while. We me and him was conversating. And then he was talking to his peoples and stuff like that. So I wound up leaving. Um, Isaiah stayed at the um, Toy Tokyo booth with everybody. Everybody knows my kids and stuff. So he's like, you know, second kid to Lev and everybody. Um, so I went, you know, and I was taking care of stuff. And I was like, you know what? I said, you want to come? So he came with me. And uh, we both, you know, met Mark Hamill. Uh, they were doing the same thing Stanley did last year, except this year they were charged. They went, it was supposed to have been $250, uh, but they actually charged him $295. And... I mean, people were getting not a signature, signatures, plural signatures. But I think the re- I mean, Mark Hamill has always been like in the eye of people as far as um, fandom goes, and um, you know, pop culture, or, or you know, because you know he's Luke Skywalker. Um, they didn't allow people to use any quotes from the movie. They you know they 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 basically asked people please no quotes from movies and. You know, they were like, like, no, no cameras, no picture. I still snuck a picture. I'm like, yo, you charge two hundred and ninety five. Two fifty was crazy, but two hundred and ninety five dollars for a photo. I mean, uh, well, of an eight by ten provided by them and a and a, and a signature. I'm like, fuck that. I'm a sneaker. I'm a, and normally I wouldn't do it, but at, I mean, I did it for Stan Lee because I'm like, a hundred dollars. That's crazy. But this guy's $195 more than Stan Lee. And I think what made him that big is the last, you know, he was at the end of the last movie. That made everybody real, real stoked. And on top of that, everybody's guessing and hoping and most likely knowing that he's going to be in um, the last Jedi movie. So I think that's what really, really made his prices go up. Um, Because, you know, at the end of the movie, you see him just standing there like, like what the fuck is she doing here? Kind of, kind of confused look. And um, you know, I mean, easy. He's, he's, Mark Hamill is a very nice guy. Uh, well, anyway, let me show you guys what happened. So yesterday, I did get my shit CGC. Tomorrow, Jim Lee's supposed to be at, C- at the CGC booth. So I'll probably talk to Sam and and um, say, "Hey, Sam, remember me?" And maybe he'll um, have the book signed, and maybe I can at least you know, cop a real quick picture with Jim Lee. Um, that's all I really, really want. Um, because my book will be graded and uh, well graded and signed. Um, a lot of the books I did get recently. Uh, where the hell did I get them from? Uh, who gives a shit? <laughs> but they are all going to be graded. Uh, I don't care if they come at six five, six point five or sevens. I like graded books. You know, if your book is graded, even if it's a low grade, you can still get like two or three times more than what the book's worth. As far as um, you know, um, stamp price. Or it's just the retail price. So anyway, let me show you guys um, the stuff that I didn't sign. And obviously, I think I told you guys why. Every, obviously, if you had um, three signatures were, three signatures is eight eighty five, And of course, it just gradually goes up. And the more signatures you get, I think they do a little break. So it was, um, each signature was two ninety five, dollars And, um... This is an extra. I use these because they, they protect your shit. I got these last year at Belmore. Or early this year at Belmore, um, somebody had comic books in them. And I was like, you know what? I can use this when I go to shows to protect whatever can fit in here. And it was actually a great idea. Um, what my plan was to have Mark Hamill sign this. And unfortunately, again, at $300 uh, signature, that is kind of crazy. Uh, I did get one. I wanted to get both, so there's a good chance I may go. Oh, I may. There's a good chance I may go ahead and um, give this one back. I might take this back to Walmart and get my twenty three dollars back, or use it for a Marvel Legend figure or something like that. To be honest, because my plan was to 
you know, take one, put it on eBay to kind of like, you know, get some money back for at least one of the signatures. But I don't really know what Mark Hamill stuff is going for. So I'll probably look that up and then decide. Maybe I might go ahead and... But either way, look at it. What's the point of going ahead and then waiting online again tomorrow just to get this signed? doesn't really make sense. Um, and then on top of that, these. I don't think these were worth... I mean, these are nice. But I don't think they're... I don't think they're fucking... $300 nice. I'm thinking, you know, I got some picture, some frame stuff done for me by Royal Collectibles. So I'm actually contemplating on maybe taking this stuff and having them do like a picture with this in it, just like this, and then maybe putting um, one of these in here. So I, I, you know, so I think about doing that. And this is the stuff that he did sign. And they were cool. Like, his agent, I'm not going to say his agent's name, but they looked out for me, man. You know, I was asking them, and I had to show, you know, I ain't, I ain't going to go into all that. But, um, you know, again, it's protected it. So I got one. So I might actually send this shit off, figure out where I could send this off to get graded. And as you can see here, this is the signature he does. This is basically his version of how Stan Lee stamps his stuff. He's got that weird-looking uh, insignia or whatever, and it says Mark Hamill certified autograph, and that is his signature there, and that basically basically proves that he actually signed this. And, of course, as I was going to the flea market one day, I was actually dreaming of getting one of these. And even though it's kind of ripped, I don't really give a shit because, um, you know, um, his wife did put the sticker on that as well. And his signature right there on top of that. And I really wanted something like this to really give a significance of of nostalgia of nostalgia for me. And that was great. I mean, so basically, 600 is right here. This is basically $600, y'all. And I basically got something for free because they actually hooked me up. And they hooked me up. They looked out for me. They didn't have to. Uh, his agent was very, very nice. And... You know what they say, you know, well, what's the saying? Empty miles don't get fed or, you know, empty, yeah, empty miles, yeah, empty, you know, empty miles don't get fed. So with that basically being said, that just, that's just scared the shit out of me. The reason why is because I got this thing here and I was guarding this like a hawk. It will be a shame for me to drop this shit now. And of course, if they look at it. You know, and I was thinking about it because I was like, damn, you know, there were, there were a couple of sideshow pieces that I got good deals on and I was actually contemplating, to be honest. And I was like, hmm, Mark Hamill's signature or this? And I'm like, you know what? Statues I can always get. But, you know, last year I uh, I thought I would actually, you know, God rest his soul, rest in peace. I actually thought I would actually get... Um, Carrie Fisher sooner or later, it didn't matter to me, and unfortunately it never happened because she passed, and this is going to show life is too short, people do not take advantage of anything because nothing's guaranteed to you except death. That's the only thing in life that's guaranteed. You understand? So always keep that in mind, and remember, be kind to others and, you know, treat others the way you would want others to treat you, man. And... Ironically, this is what I got last year, and one of the same guys that did me a good deal last year, I actually paid two hundred and fifty dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars for this last year. This Arkham Asylum PF um, Joker. This is a piece that nobody can get rid of, and I think now this thing is going for almost. Well, it's going for around at least twice of what I paid for it. And um. And, I, and he was like, you know, I said, I asked him if they could personalize this. He could have personalized the other two figures for me, but I was like, ah, it doesn't make no sense. Um, and he, it's funny. Uh, and he's like, well, well, what's your name? And I said, yeah, well, you know, I said, uh, Mike. And he said, well, you prefer Michael or Mike? I said, whatever you want. And he was like, okay. And I was like, all right, you know what? Make it easier for you. You got to lie make it Mike. And he said, all right, cool. And, you know, uh, I just wish, I, I mean, I wish I could have uh, fucking recorded you guys are just, and he was funny, you know, um, Isaiah was like, who's that? And he was, you know, look, he gave like, who, <laughs> it was funny. So I said, like, that's all right there. And he, so he started, you know, doing that little kitty shy shit. And I'm like, yo, this, you love him on, as a joke in the animated series and stuff. And he started, you know, getting that little kid like, oh, look, it was funny. Like, 
and, and he and you know Mark Hamill actually did the Joker voice for him and stuff like that and it was really cool but when I actually looked at this I was like oh shit and I was like oh that's crazy and I got real happy because it says jokes on Mike you know which was you know Joker sadistic uh what you call it and as you see right here he put it in that green because they asked me what color would you like the ink in on this and I said definitely that green color I think it will pop and bring it out um and again right there it says jokes on Mike and with his signature and again his um cert and I figured you know what it would make sense to do that or to even if I had to pay three I mean you have people that were paying a couple thousand dollars man to get shit signed because you know again it's Mark Hamill he was in the first two well excuse me the first three um technically you know four five and no Yeah, four, five, and six Star Wars, but, you know, the original, the, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, the original three um, Star Wars is anyway. So, you know, I mean, he's up there with age. We're all up there with age. We never know what tomorrow brings. So I was like, you know what? I had to get it done. And I was like, hmm, statues I can always get. Hmm, getting him and, at you know, at another convention or something and being able to, to capitalize on on a moment like that, sometimes the nostalgia and experience is a lot better than just getting something that everybody has. So I was like, you know what? I, I you know, and I, I kept fighting myself for a lot. I'm like, God damn, that's two hundred ninety five dollars, and I'm counting, and, and I'm at, for every every other minute and every t every step I'm taking to go through that fucking maze line because he was basically basically at the same booth Stan Lee was at, um, and. Of course, we saw him a lot quicker. He even walked off, and I guess he went to use the restroom or whatever and came back, and I actually shook his son's hand. I remember his son. You know, like, uh, his eyes and his and his nose never changed, but, you know, obviously he got a little, he got a lot older. His son looks like, uh, kind of has that, you know, he kind of looks like, he kind of reminds me of Emilio Estevez a little bit in the face, especially from the side profile, but uh, just imagine Emilio Estevez with uh, dark, dark black hair. Well, I guess you... I guess if you think of Emilio Estevez with dark brown hair, he would be Charlie Sheen after all. Him and Charlie Sheen are brothers. <coughs> He's just slimmer. He's slimmer with blonde hair, but they and he got blue eyes. Versus his father Martin Sheen and his brother Charlie have both have it brown. His eyes are blue and he's got blonde hair. But anyway, uh, you know, his son was real cool and I, you know, I was talking to his son real quick and his agent really, really took care of me. Um it was it was really really cool. It was, a, it was definitely a good experience, and but the whole way I was fighting like, damn, do I really really wanna <laughs> like? And then I'm like, oh, but ah, oh, fuck it. You know, you only live once, and you never know when run to this guy again. You never know what happens. So I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, whatever. And this is one of the first and only statues I've ever had signed by anybody. So now if I ever go somewhere and I see Kane Harder. Uh, at least I know I can uh, get my Jason signed by my Jason base signed by him, and I actually got that idea from last year's Comic Con. Um, I seen a lot of people with statue bases, and I'm like, yo, that was a good idea. People were bringing uh, all types of different figures, and a lot of people were bringing um, Sideshow and Kota Bikia, um Spider Man type statues, but just the bases. I think like a handful of people did come with the actual figure with. It with the box and everything, but a lot of people did come with the base, and I'm glad I protected it because it, you know, at the end of the day, this is cool. You know, he did the voice for um, all, you know, most of all the animated um, Jokers, and he also did the voice for the Arkham series. So what better way than you know, what I'm saying to spin off a beautiful piece I got at Comic Con last year on Sunday for for half of what it's going for now. Then to turn around and take it this year at another Comic Con and get it signed by a nostalgic actor in a, in a um, nostalgic uh, movie that I, I I I watched and loved. You can't get better than that. And I was like, you know what? If I could only get one fucking done, it was it was between a 40th anniversary figure to be, to be truthful. It was between that and this um, this statue. And I was actually told, you know what? For you because I'm not gonna go into detail and say what, but he said, you know what? I would uh, I, I'll tell you what. If you do, 
you know, I'll tell you what, I'll give you, I'll do one and you pay for one. But he, you know, we were talking on the side when nobody was around. And I was like, all right, that's fine. I appreciate it. You know, I don't want to push it and get, get greedy and have him change his mind. Um, so if it had to go down to that, if it had to be just one and he said no and I decided to do it, it would have been one of those two anyway. But if, obviously he said yes. <laughs> but I was hoping that if I paid for two, I would, you know, he would do four. I probably could have pushed it, but then I probably could have lost everything. So, he, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, oh, uh, uh. You know, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, I basically got two hundred and ninety-five dollars off for three signatures, so you can't complain. Um, but if I didn't have that much stuff, I, I would have definitely did the fortieth, the base, and I would have took one of his eight by tens that he was giving with the signature. But I was like, you know what? I prefer the toy shit. You know what I mean? Because I got a lot of photos and shit hanging around. Um, I mean, you know, tomorrow's another day. Maybe tomorrow I might go ahead and do something else. I don't know. So we'll fucking play by the we'll play by ear and figure that out. But at the end of the day, got some stuff done. And like I told you guys months ago, even before we moved here, well, brought our house here, I kept saying that, you know, I really want to start getting into more signature shit that I personally got signed by people and had that experience. To me, that's a lot more that's like a holy grail. That's like that's like a doom. Or a Magneto piece to me. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, these are pieces that are mass produced. But at the same time, I'm taking something and making it into more. I'm getting the experience and having something personalized to me. Even though there's another three or four thousand or a couple of hundred people online as well, but at the end of the day, everything is unique. Because you are getting that experience and you are now actually, I can't explain it, but it's, it's just beautiful. So I did get three out of three, or three out of three, three out of six, um, three out of six. So it is what it is. I was hoping I, I mean, we, we, we spoke. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and toot my own horn, but I was there conversating with him a lot longer, and I was, and the other guy was like, wow, dude, all day, you're the, you're the only person that he actually did a joker voice for. And he actually um, said, well, for this young man. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, oh, well, he's my kid, so I'll take it. And he was like, yo, very cool. And I said, yo, I love you, brother. I said, I love you, brother Mark. And he said, I love you too, bud. And, you know, he shook my hand again. Uh, he reached out to shake Isaiah's hand. Isaiah was, you know, very, very, like, you know how kids get shy. You know, he doesn't know who he is. <laughs> Unfortunately, he couldn't take pictures. So... It is what it is. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'll go by and see how the photo op shit is. Maybe I'll do something there. You know, I don't know. Figure this shit out. Uh, I might decide to go back tomorrow because the experience is really, really good. I have to say, you know, it was two ninety five. The experience was a lot more pleasurable than the Stan Lee shit was last year. Stan Lee, I basically paid two hundred bucks. I got. I'm looking at it right now. I got one uh, Marvel Legend classic. Uh, Spider-Man, uh, well, Amazing Spider-Man piece. I, I forgot which series uh, of the Toy Biz Marvel Legend that is, but um, I got that. I picked that up for a decent price from a guy I know from auction, from toy auctions and state auctions and shit. His name is Mike. He's known me at a lot of conventions, and I I, I needed something to get signed by Stan Lee, so he did that. No, 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 no. Yeah, I got that from him and the book. I got both pieces from him, as a matter of fact, so he gave me a real good deal for both. And I went straight downstairs to Stanley, waited in line on that Thursday, uh, waited in line for about two and a half hours, got both signed, but they both only cost me 200 You know what I'm saying? Well, 200 plus the fact that I had to pay, I think, an extra 30 or 40 bucks for the company that deals directly with Stanley. Um, but he's got his own people that does all that, all the jibber jabba. So, and that's the book that I never got, unfortunately. But, uh, and it was two, it was like 230 something. So you figure, you know, say at the end of the day for an extra 300 and somewhat dollars, I actually got three pieces signed and had a better gained experience from another, um, from somebody else I loved in movies and stuff. So, and on top of that, the experience of meeting the, meeting the person, you know what I mean? You know, memory is a lot more important than, you know, um, Material, materialistic things, because those things dissolve over time, but your mind, 
you know, you know, like um, that experience and those thoughts is just something that can't be taken away unless you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is with this stuff. So I showed you that, and I've been talking long enough, uh, boring the fuck out of you guys and girls. Um, so like I said, I got three out of I got three. Uh, well, you know, I had six, and I got three out of three, which means three got signed and three didn't, which is the which is two of these frames. So I'll most likely be taking these in with probably the 40th anniversary figure, and I'll most likely have um, somebody um, put that shit together for me. Uh, side of that, uh, let me show you guys this. Oh, and I had a Super Nintendo, no, an actual Nintendo 64 that I brought off of this uh, kid through uh, through Let Go. Oh no, it wasn't through Let Go. It was uh, I think through Craigslist or some. I think one a yard sale or some shit. It was somewhere. And he, he has a lot of stuff. And I'm, it's funny because um, I think I paid him. I wound up giving him, like, we wound up talking, and I think I paid, like, 60 bucks. I got a, a, a Nintendo 64 game, the system, and a Sega, a Sega, um, the fuck was that again? The Sega Saturn. And I think I paid 60 bucks for all of it. And it was a, a couple other games he threw in there as well. So it worked out pretty good. And uh, I, you know, yesterday, you know, me and Isaiah, we went to my guys in J and L. They gave me a real good deal on the stuff that I have. They always take everything I got anyway. And um, I forgot to take them to the Nintendo sixty four because they said, you know, I give you X Y Z, and I was like, all right, cool bet. And I forgot it. So today, yesterday, I walked by these these game guys, and they said they had a Sega Master System. And I was like, yo, I was like, yo, listen, check this out. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. So we were talking, and. I'm like, all right. So one thing led to another, and you know, today I brought them in, yeah, the Nintendo 64. And I said, hey, you know, you guys buy this, what do you give? And he was explaining it to me, and the owner was so fucking cool. Like, they wanted 80 bucks for the Sega Master System, and they said it works, complete with everything, no box. And I wanted the Sega Master System for a while. I mean, my last huge collection I had, I didn't have a Sega Master. I did have a Sega Master System, but it was crap. Um, cosmetic, it worked, but cosmetically it was fucked up. And, um, so anyway, we were talking for a while and he, I, I wound up coming $15 out of my pocket. So I gave him Nintendo 64's Glover, a Nintendo 64 system and the controller, the analog controller was kind of fucked up on it. And he went ahead and he gave me, um, I paid 15 bucks on top of that for this Sega Master System. And they are a video game store, and he said it does work. So he gave me this, and you know, um, the Sega Master System original adapter, a Sega Master System controller, and the Sega Master System AV cables. So, and then, and and he said he's gonna have some Sega Master System games tomorrow. And he it's funny because he's not that he's like literally like not even. 150 feet from 8-bit and up, which is a, a video game store, and I guess a lot of people were complaining about 8-bit and up, and uh, they were going to him buying games, and they said, yo, the other guy over here is crazy, the prices are crazy, and they were all almost in the same area and almost in the all, I mean, almost in the same vicinity. 8-bit and up, video games in New York, and of course, uh, I forgot the name of that store, but that store is in Brooklyn, and judging the store in Brooklyn, they price, they, their people are cool, and the prices are fucking phenomenal. And obviously, you see the price tag. They're only asking eighty dollars for this, and everybody else is asking a hundred to a hundred and a quarter for this. Um, so I'm very happy with that. Like I said, I am trying to build my uh, trying to do everything back again. And you know, one of the people I know, I met at Toy Tokyo two years ago. I became very cool with them. That's the kind of person I am, man. People meet me, and when they know me personally. I just, I, I mean, I draw, I draw people to me like a magnet. Unfortunately, up here on YouTube, it's different because of my old channel. And some people say I'm arrogant or I'm a drama person. Listen, you mean, you ever see me in person? I'm the same person I am regardless. But for some reason, when people, I don't know, I just can't explain it. But I just draw this fucking ray of, of, I can't explain it. This energy, this real good energy. I don't know. But anyway, I mean, shit. I got fucking Mark Hamill and his agent. To give me a free fucking, you know, a free sign. What does that say? I got JDF 
let me do security, and he's always asking for me. I got his num his personal fucking number. Personal number. Last year I dealt everything through his um through his um his assistant and I love friend, very nice lady. And me and him were talking this year. He liked the way I handle myself. He likes my aura. I got his number now, his personal number. And some people I, I met two years ago, um, you know, they actually, you know, people always give me stuff like this. Look at that. Hold up. <laughs> That's funny. So I'm not going <laughs> to, this is going to be funny. This is going to write my, uh, my Mr. T shriny thing. So that's pretty badass. You know, last year they actually gave, actually, last year, Seth and his wife, Momo, she's Filipino, he's Jewish. Uh, he looks Irish because he's like real pale and he got the red hair. I love him. That's my dude, man. I, you know, I love, I love Seth and I love uh, Momo, his wife. Isaiah love him too, especially her. That's his girlfriend. So, um, you know, last year, you know, they gave me this badass Mr. T, uh, kind of like a Jesus type of uh, portrait. With him dressed almost in a robe with Jesus with the gold. It is really, really cool. And um, they gave me that last year. And this year, there's like, oh, I guess they said, oh, this is definitely for Mr. T. It was funny. People love me. If I, I mean, if I got the same respect and love and shit on YouTube as I have out, but people see me and know me from years and years or from videos, it would be ridiculous. Because at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you forget just how much you're respected. Because, you know... I look and I don't notice, but people do watch my videos. And uh, sometimes they might watch, you know, and then every other couple of weeks or months, somebody might watch a video. They might not watch all of them. So all that accumulates too. So that's why I'm really contemplating on uh, doing what I was saying. And then um, the, the guy that I was telling you guys about, um, he has a star here in Jersey, him and his wife. And his and they're not his brothers, but the two of them are brothers. But they all three of them are almost like brothers because... You know, they all grew up around each other as kids. And, you know, he has a business and he does work with them. It's, it's amazing. Um, you know, real cool guy. His staff, you know, the, you know, the guys who work with him are real cool. They, you know, everybody help each other out. They help him and his wife. You know, it's just a real cool. Every time they see me, I'm, not, I'm one of the only people that they allow to go behind and touch certain shit that others can't touch and open up. I mean, it's great to be, it's great to have that privilege with people and to have that kind of trust and stuff from people, man. It's really, really cool. I mean, like I said, you know, I'm just, I'm that kind of person, man. Like, a lot of people view me and look at me a certain way, but, you know, it's just amazing because you see me, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I just, it's just crazy, but I get him up you know, Yesterday, I got a nice amount of uh, money from him uh, working a deal out. Today, um, I worked a couple of deals out with him and uh, his people's. And, you know, his, his, he wasn't there, but his wife is always comfortable with with me. We always are very fair with each other on prices because they have an overhead. I know they do. And he'll take prices. He know he takes everything in bulk. You know, he's not nitpicking and saying, I'll take this and I'll take that. He takes everything. But at the end of the day, I bring stuff there not wanting to take shit back. So I got to give you a good deal. And I got to keep you happy, keep you making money. Keep you what product you like. And on top of that, I know whenever I see you at a show, you're going to take care of me and you're going to take everything I got because you move stuff. And I love that about them. So anyway, uh, like I said, I am nostalgically getting back into my uh, G.I. Joes and all that other jibba jabba. So I did get this G.I. Joe tank. Uh, all it needs is a quick wash. So I use a toothbrush. And they were actually only selling this for $10. It is missing the top cannon piece, but that's easy to find. Um, and it's in really, really good really really good condition i like it and it's got the uh the treads and stuff like that on it so that's pretty badass funny thing is uh we took another route on the jersey transit which is like jersey's version of like metro north slash long island railroad there's two ways to get to my house you have um the regular um i think they call the eastern corridor or more s's morris the s's morris line which goes through um I don't know the stops, but it does go to Brick Church. And then you have the other line, which is the Montclair University line. Montclair um, Booten line. Bolton or Booten, whatever the they call it, line, which goes to um, uh, Montclair University. And so I either take the, I either take the Morris, what's the call line, to uh, Brick Church and take a cab from there. 
because it's a nice walk. Or I can, um, you know, take the other corridor, which is the Booten uh, Montclair corridor. <sighs> and that lets me off at, um, at Watsessing. And Watsessing is literally like I can walk to, I mean, it's actually a quicker walk and a shorter walk than walking from my old house in Queens all, you know what I'm saying, to the A train. So it is a quicker walk, quicker and shorter. All I got to do is make a left turn. I'm already on Dodge Street and go down like five, like four. It's not even really, the blocks are extremely short. So it's cool though, man. I'm very, very, you know, that's very cool. So I would still, I would just probably be getting on the train, getting in the cab now coming home. And so I got that. And I wound up getting this because I, I guess I, you know, I got, I got like one, of, one of them already. Or no, I got two of them. Shit. Why the hell did I get this thing? And I, I just realized I got two of them motherfuckers over there. They don't matter. Fuck it. No more the merrier, right? They do have. I think they do have another one of these. And um, this is a the GI Joe official collective display case. Carrying, I mean, um, well, excuse me. Carry and display twelve GI Joe team members. And they actually, this is uh, fifteen. He gave me, a, he gave me a deal though. He gave me a deal for um, this and some and, and some of the Joes. And I kept coming back with more stuff. That's what I do. I don't do everything in one shot because when you do that, you kind of you can you can short yourself. So what I do is I do everything in moderations. So when I do everything in moderations, it makes it easier for me because I can I can actually get more. When you bring everything in one big bulk, you can short yourself. But when you bring things in in sections and get rid of the okay stuff quicker and you kind of work a price base with that, you can build off that base because you're bringing, every time you come, you're bringing better shit. And that's how I do things. So here it says um, inside combat command file. Then now here is, um, it says Cobra, Dragon Off, Sniper Rifle, whatever the hell that means. Mercenary, Rocket Launcher, His Driver. Cobra Commander Laser Pistol. So these are like different versions of the Joes. Then here it says Cobra Officer AK-47 Assault Rifle, Ranger, M32 Submachine Gun, Arctic Trooper Laser Rifle, SEAL, Harpoon Rifle. Um, then now here, Helicopter Assault Trooper, XM-16 uh, Attack Rifle, Machine Gunner, Heavy Machine Gunner, that's definitely robot. Marine is definitely gun ho MX um, 70, um, 76 uh, grenade launcher, either that or that's uh, bazooka. And then first sergeant submachine gun. So first sergeant is definitely do. Um, it is missing a little main thing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's missing a little main thing right here. I'm over here thinking you guys are looking at this the whole time and you're not. I also got pictures with um, Yao Ming and of course Robert Bruce, which is funny because Robert Bruce actually brought me out my badge, my badges yesterday um, for me. A real cool guy. Love him, man. Every time we see each other, we just a real cool guy. I actually got this from them because I wanted this Superman for a while. This is even back when we, um, when we moved from East New York and moved out to the Rockaways, a.k.a. Queens slash fucking Long Island, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when I was getting to the uh, the old um, DC multiverse figures, I've been trying to find this. And stores that did have them on card, everybody wanted 40 dollars for him. And... If you guys don't know, um, I did get a statue of an older DC uh, DC Comics version of this Superman. Well, the bigger one at um, Bodner's auction last year, and I actually sculpted it here and repainted it and made it look real nice. And that, that I mean, that statue is gone. Um, really, really, it was really, really cool, and I love this. This is basically after um, he came back. Uh, from the, uh, you know, when Doomsday killed him and he came back, he had the longer hair and I love this Superman and I, I, I want this to go with some of the other DC characters that I have and, you know, saying, so I got this, it was actually 20 bucks, but we worked a deal out, so I got it for 10 because, I, like I said, I worked a deal out. Then I got some G.I. Joes here. I have the Tiger Stripes, um, very great condition, um, Flint, I love Flint. Uh, this is eight bucks, so they actually gave me him for four. Then here I have one of my favorite GI Joes with his file card, um, and it's hit and run, and they have hit and run complete for twelve bucks with his knife, his uh, grappler hook, and everything. And again, I love hit and run. 
Um, he's a cool ass GI Joe. Then here, you know, I gotta get the Baroness. Uh, and then I'm kind of fucked up because they did. This one dude did have the sideshow Baroness um, premium format, and he only wanted two seventy five for it. And I prolonged so much, and I was I kept going back and forth um, to JDF doing security. And I, today I was doing a lot more running around, and some of the staff from Toy Tokyo was taking care of him. Um, that I missed out on that, but I did get her. There was ten, so I paid six on her because uh, she's in great condition with her backpack. And of course, um, Zurana. Uh, Zumrana was also 10. Her I got for 10 also. This is the best condition Zumrana I have because I actually have um, Zartan and Xandar. So I was like, you know what? They had them there, so I got her. Uh, figured I'd do the whole family. Of course, come on, Lady J was 15. Her, I think I got her for 8. Um, she's actually complete. She comes with her film camera or recorder, backpack, and her harpoon missile type gun. Lady J is one of my favorite female G.I. Joe's. They also have Scarlet, but they wanted like 50 bucks for her. And White Storm Shadow wasn't in the best condition. He was like yellow, and they wanted like $50 for one and $60 for the other. And Cobra Commander was also eight, but he had, they have it here for 15 And he comes with his uh, laser pistol. And it's the, uh, the Cobra Commander that I always used to find hard to find. And back, back in 2007, 2008, when I was real big on buying G.I. Joe's at market value, I actually did get a couple of him for $30, and 25 to 35 at Love Saves the Day, which was a place that used to have a lot of G.I. Joe's. They were cheaper than eBay. And here you have uh, my man Footloose. Um, thought he, yeah, I was about to say, I thought he had his rifle. He does have his um, M16, and he does come with his backpack, and he was 6 bucks. They basically gave him, gave him to me for 4 then you have Jinx, which is Falcon's love. She does come. She's missing one of her swords, um, and she's actually ten bucks. Um, and she's in really, really good condition. I'm almost done, you guys. Then here's another Flint, which is the regular Flint. You know, Lady Joe's, Lady Joe's, Lady J's love. He was ten. They wound up giving him for five. This is. They had a couple, but this is the best condition one they had. Um, so I definitely got Flint. And of course they had my man Freedom. Um, he was 10. They gave him to me for 5 because the yellowing, like the sun, whatever thing of him. But I, I can always get one. And I can. I don't know whatever. We give a fuck. I'm always stuttering. He comes with his bird Freedom. He comes with um, his little thing that goes around him. <laughs> around his waist. He comes with his sniper gun and his backpack. So I, I think I, I paid ten for him because he's an old GI Joe that I love, and it's funny because in the comic book, I mean in the comic books, in the cartoon, Snake Eyes never fought Storm Shadow. It was always Spirit, 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 and, St and Storm Shadow will always fight, and they always had honor amongst them when they fought. And I think here I got two by mistake, so I will be taking one. Yeah, I did. So I will be taking one of these back. I'll probably look at them both really, really good and figure out which is which and take one back. Um, because she, they have, yeah, it says here, buzzer complete for 10 bucks. So there's two of them. So I'll probably look and see which one I like the best and take the other one back and say, yeah, I did pick up two by mistake. I know they'll change it out for me, so I'm not worried about that. Then here you have Dr. Mindbender. Dr. Mindbender, I paid, eight, it was actually eight. And I think, I don't really remember what I paid for him. Uh, I think they only gave me $2 off for him because he's a popular Cobra. Destro, shockingly. Um, they only have him for eight dollars in great condition. I don't know if this one has his, his little missile gun thing inside a backpack, but the fact that he does come in his backpack and he is in really really good condition at eight bucks, I wound up getting it for five. And then last but not least, I have the second GI Joe um, figure that comes with a dog, and he does come with dog at least. He's not complete. It was eight, but they gave him to me for five, which was um. Fuck his name again. Shit. Oh man. You got Mutt and Junkyard and I forgot. Ooh, whatever. But the the MP guy, the MP cop. Forgot his fuck. Law and order. Law and order. Bugging out. I was supposed to be a G.I. Joe master and I'm uh, forgetting names that should come to me like breathing. So all these I'ma keep, obviously. 
and start, you know, get my GI Joe stuff together. Uh, and, and what I'm doing is a lot of my, a lot of my um, watch calls that I have, a lot of my, uh, what do you call that stuff, y'all? A lot of my, uh, my video games, I'm actually getting rid of, not the systems, but games. What I want to do now is because I, I look at a lot of people's videos and I love seeing a whole bunch of games all over the room. But it's like, at the end of the day, you know you're never going to play those games. So I'm really I'm really gonna start just keeping games that are great titles and great priced games. Even if I never play them, if they're like 15, 20 bucks, and I if I get them for like a dollar, two dollars, I keep them. But other than that, um, I only want top of the line games or games that are worth something. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna just get anything just to fill my collection. You know, um, you don't need every fucking figure for a collection. So what's the point? So I'm over here looking at which. Which I wanna say which zapper, which buzzer is actually better. And I would take the other one back. They're both tight from what I'm looking at. So yeah, I'll take this one back. This one I like, I like the way it looks a little better. Yeah, so I'll take this one back and tell them, oh yeah, I brought two by mistake. They ain't gonna have a problem taking that back, so it is what it is. Uh, way up at the tank also. So, you know, over the week, you know, like Sunday, Monday, and shit. Like, well, Monday is no school, so Monday or Tuesday, I'll probably just fuck around with this stuff and clean it up and start getting all my, all my nostalgic stuff, nostalgic, nostalgic stuff, and basically putting everything uh, in bins. So, this is going back tomorrow to them. Superman, I got put in my uh, what you call with my other um, DC uh, figs. I love this Superman. I wanted him for so long, and comic shops want twenty to thirty five dollars for him, just like this. And you know they had it for twenty, and I got him for ten, so that was fucking great. I did get him a great deal on stuff, so they looked out for me as well. So what I'm gonna do right now after this, after or while this video is loading up, actually, I do have to go on my phone and upload my other YouTube. Videos before this one because I want to I want to get everything confused. But what I'm gonna do right now is carefully put the Joker. As a matter of fact, let me do that now. I'm gonna carefully put the Joker back on this base. Because soon as I put him on the base, he won't he won't do anything to screw up the, uh, the what you call it. And this other dude did have Harley Quinn, and he did tell me he would give her to me for uh, four fifty. So maybe show you a piece I'll pick up. So let me, uh, yeah, perfect. Oh, my God. Look at that. If that is not perfect, that is perfect. I would, I should pick this shirt and show you, like, he is like, it was, it was meant, it was meant for me to get that. I don't really like this, but whatever. A lot of people had a lot of good shit. And a lot of people wanted me to buy stuff, but I was like, listen, you know, I got a daughter in college now. I just gave her two grand and, you know, this, that, and the third. Because, you know, everybody see me, they light up because they know I buy. And they're like, hey, Mr. T, what's up? And I'm like, they're like, oh, I got this for you. Especially the dudes that I brought that, uh, I paid that eight fifty for that, um, what you call it? For that uh, that Darth Vader bus, they were like, "Oh, my dude Mike, you know, the year prior, I think I gave him what nine hundred for that XM Hope that I love." Um, so you know, a lot of people they see me, they they just say they just see cha ching, but I let everybody know this year, not no cha ching, more like click clean, because <laughs> it wasn't like that. But the reason I said, "Oh, this is crazy," like I don't know if Mark Hamill ever signed one of these before, but this is just fucking ridiculous, like. It was like his signature was meant perfectly to go on this. And yeah, he did ask me. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see. And I don't want to fuck up my figure or anything like that. But I'm going to try to show you guys because I don't want to mess up the what you call it. But if you can see, I'm not going to really go crazy because I want to tilt it and have his head fall off. But the writing is perfect. It's like he's not even stepping on the writing. It's just perfect, you guys. But anyway... Stay tuned for other videos, and uh, maybe tomorrow I'll do some more vids, man. Peace.